Thomas. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against Kerry. Must be nice. Disclosures of interest. That one there. Uh, move on to item number six, the Merrill Bin. Council will be aware of the sadden, will be aware of and saddened by the tragic deaths by separate accidents of two very well known men in the district. Council's thoughts and prayers and deepest sympathy are extended to the family of a local farmer, Broughton Bird, who passed away tragically on the 24th of November, 2020. Broughton was a very well known and respected farmer with major land holdings in Rennie, Daisdale, Kroon districts. Broughton's funeral is being held at 3.30 p.m. on 8th of December. Council's thoughts and prayers and deepest sympathies are also extended to the family of Andrew Goldman, who was tragically killed in an accident on the 2nd of December, 2020. Andrew owned and operated Andrew Goldman Excavations from Barramon near Yarrawonga. Andrew had a business interest in both Mora and Federation Council areas and was only recently elected as a first time council of Mora Shire. Goldman Earth Moving has performed works both for and across the Federation Council area and his business is very active supporter of various sporting and community groups across the region. Would someone like to move that recommendation to the council? Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Council Councillor Whitechurch. All in favour? Uh, question, sorry, Councillor Longmire. If I may, Mr Mayor, with the opportunity to speak on behalf of supporting your mayoral minutes. Absolutely. Um, in regard to both mentioned persons, um, certainly uh, Broughton led the way for innovation um, in crop production. He was always looking and demonstrating um, better farming practices. One of the main things he did was went to West Australia and uh, viewed the what's called the DPS tillage equipment and that was imported, a lot of it came back this way because of uh, his knowledge and understanding of how good a machine it was. So um, that was very uh, innovative. Um, Andrew Goldman, who was a very good friend of mine, was a community supporter. He demonstrated this by his sponsorship in so many sporting groups in shires, as, in other shires as well as uh, the Federation Shire. He was uh, driven by innovation as well and uh, new ways to do certainly roadside <coughs> works and one of the things that he introduced that I hadn't seen anywhere else was a fleet of belly dumper gravel trucks that he used uses quite frequently everywhere because of the uniqueness of what they are. If I may, Mr Mayor, take the opportunity standing on my feet and if it's okay today, I'd suggest and I think councillors would agree that we address council now, we're all back together again with the opportunity to stand on our feet as formally done in the in the chamber. Um, I'd like to uh, bring to Council's at attention um, two things that I've seen and witnessed. Today's opportunity for acknowledgement of uh, citizens within our community and also the night of the awards night at Baldar when the general manager called to attention the opportunity for a minute's silence of the gathering there. Um, for And it was well received in regard to respect given to past um, deceased persons within the community. And what I'd like to do, if I may, is foreshadow a notice of motion at Council's next ordinary meeting uh, that all community members who are deceased from the beginning of, say, the new calendar year, to recognise them in an opportunity before the commencement at each meeting, like used to happen in the former Coral Council. It was disbanded for whatever reason um, with the uh, opportunity with the administrator, but I think as fairness right across our community, each member and respective member of our community should be recognised. Thank you, Councillor Longmore. Excellent. Uh, councillors, before I finish that report, <coughs> I'd like to take the opportunity, councillors, to um, wish councillors and staff and, and any members out there in the public gallery to wish you all a Merry Christmas um, and congratulate, congratulate you all on, on the input and the work that's happened in 2020, we've, uh, it's been a very fruitful year for Council um, with a lot of work done and I'd acknowledge the job that um, our Council's done in relation to COVID and uh, keeping our workers and, and public safe has uh, it's been amazing. Um, but we've also had our trials this year, so no doubt we'll all look forward to 2021. But um, 
Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all, you all. Hopefully it's a, a very safe and enjoyable one. So thank you. Is someone like to move that mail report? Moved by Councillor Thomas. Oh, you already had, sorry. Um, Councillor. You had Longmire and Whitechurch. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, okay. Recommendation. Happy with that, Councillor Longmire. Yes, thank you. And Whitechurch, all in favour? Oh, Against? Carrie. Okay, right. now I'd like yeah. to remove... We've gone to foreshadow for next. Yeah. Uh, move the next report, report 8.2, to allow the external order to present to council. Okay, move please, second, second another way. Like yeah. that, please, move by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against, carried. <coughs> welcome, uh, Director Shannon, then. Yeah, welcome, Director Shannon. Thank you, Mr. And welcome Mr. to our order. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Brad Bowen from Pro Aubrey. He's a representative of Council's External Auditors. He's here to present yeah, to you on the conduct of the audit for the financial statements for the year ending 30th of June 20. Thank you. Um, good, good morning all. It's nice to see you again. I've seen um, many of you um, previously. So the, the positive news for this year is the New South, uh, Office of Local Government gave us a 30-day extension due to COVID to complete uh, the annual financial statements and we um, lodged them inside the deadline of 30 November. So from a timing perspective, we were, we were compliant in terms of on time. Um, then did we get a clean audit opinion um, or a qualified one? And what we managed to achieve was a um, clean or an unqualified audit opinion in the conduct report. Um, so up on screen there at the moment is um, what the conduct report is. Your council actually gets two reports each year. One's a highly commoditised version, which fundamentally just says true and fair. And then this one's got some more free form text in it with some highlight observations throughout the year. Uh, Federation Council predominantly generates its revenue from two streams, rates and charges and then grants. Um, in terms of rates and charges, they're up 4.3% on the prior year, and that's a result of two functions. One of those is the rate peg, um, so just a touch over um, two, and then the balance is due to an increase in rateable properties within the Shire. So a solid result there. Grants and contributions were up by um, a, a reasonable margin there flowing through. A lot of that, though, is to do with particular projects um, that Council had delivered and some additional um, community merger funding. Importantly there, um, the second and the second to bottom and last lines really highlight the position of Federation, though, and a range of um, amalgamated councils as we continue to try and plot out a course um, into the future quite a um, close to break even result in as the operating result from the trade from the year. Um, so some of that's due to the way revenue recognition rules work in accounting at the moment. Um, when we receive the revenue, it's brought to account as we deliver the programs and projects over our years those expenses then feed through and each year our assets um, as they get revalued means depreciation chases through with a higher value. So for Federation Council with a large um, square kilometre area um, and a relatively low population means that we're going to be challenged in this space of um, an operating result. We scroll down onto the second page um, and then there's the statement of cash flows what you can see there in the three bars, the dark grey is our rates and grants coming through. The light grey is activity pertaining to investing. So where we council spends its money fundamentally on road renewal, mostly each year with then some other capital programs in between. And you see that little black bar in the far right-hand column for the first time in a while, we've actually taken out some new debt. So that was the new loan that was taken out during 2020. Not particularly large and council's overall debt levels for its size remains relatively relatively low, but you can see that with some new debt funding taken for the first time in, in recent memory. Uh, if we scroll down onto the next page, um, an area of focus in New South Wales local government just recently through some media activity um, is this concept of restricted cash. So council holds funds um, and you can see there, which is the bolded line, um, cash and investments, and quite a healthy number, but that's then broken down through external restrictions, internal restrictions, and feeds down to unrestricted cash. Your external restrictions relates to items such as sewer and um, water-based funding, and so that needs to be spent for the purpose for which it's raised. So it, it's, um, if you like, ring-fenced and isolated for those purposes. 
internal restrictions as done by vote of council. This tends to be our plant replacement reserve, funding employee leave entitlements and any capital programs that are, that are in play and feeds down to an unrestricted cash level. Um, that's been extensively tested, that note, to make sure that um, it, it internally ties through and those restrictions are valid. Um, but the, the one call out there is the unrestricted cash level is not particularly healthy or generous. It's an item that needs to be monitored and managed and, and kept in view of. Uh, we need to keep it positive. You can see there's a smaller uplift this year, but there's not a significant cushion there um, to deal with, with activities as we roll forward, which then highlights the importance of the long-term financial management plan. There's a comment there on debt, but um, the overall debt level of council is sub $10 million, so not particularly large for council's overall size. And then on the following page, um, what we do is move into some of these T-Corp performance ratios. They're down the back of your financial statements. I'd suggest we view, there's two things to note with these ratios. They should be reviewed over the horizon period, so don't get too focused on any one year because um, you take the first ratio where it's dropped below the bar in 2020, it's okay to have a deficit year. What's not okay is if you have continuous ongoing deficit years. Um, clearly that's a problem. A, a, a deficit year in any one year could be because of the way that we've um, delivered our program activity. Own source operating ratio, the second one, is also that red bar is, is um, across all councils at 60%, um, very hard for rural and regional councils to achieve that benchmark. And in order to achieve it, what that would suggest is if you stopped getting grant funding, if you did that, that would have a negative impact on the, on the first ratio. So um, they, they need to be um, observed collectively and across the horizon period. The next page goes into a couple of solvency um, calculations. So the red bar here um, it indicates um, $1.50. So what it's saying is that for every dollar of liabilities, we'd really like you to have $1.50, at least $1.50 of unrestricted assets. So that means you've got a bit of a buffer in there. And you can see in each year we're above that. We've actually improved that buffer marginally in, in 2020. So that's, that's an encouraging um, result for, for Federation Council. Debt service cover, we're well above, and the driver there is because we've got a low level of debt that we're carrying. Um, and then on the next page is just a couple of more solvency um, ratios. So the um, top one is rates and annual charges outstanding. That's really encouraging for council, taking into account financial situations and COVID. We were expecting that might uptick a little bit, but um, it's actually come down. So really good in terms of ratepayers' um, appetite to, to pay their rates and the cash collection efforts of council's finance team. And cash expense cover, we're, we're satisfactorily above the bar there. Then there's a brief comment um, further down on the page about um, infrastructure renewals. Um, and, and fundamentally, you've got a couple of one-off projects that council's doing, the swimming pools and things of that nature, but fundamentally it's about road renewal. And that's where the vast majority of our um, significant capital spend is on a recurring basis. There was a couple of new accounting standards that come into play, one on revenue and one on leases. Um, and then this report finishes on the bottom of page eight with a comment around legislative compliance. And the really encouraging news there is that um, throughout the course of the external audit, there were no instances of legislation non-compliance. So um, that, that generates a signed conduct report. And um, said at the outset from, from my lens, which is with the finance team, a really challenging circumstance when the when the pressure was on back in um, July and August and, and audit activity needed to be done. Most people were restricted from their workplace and their systems. Um, and so we really appreciated the support and effort um, and the collaboration of um, both Joe and um, the, um, to, to get us to the finish line on time and a clean audit opinion is, um, a really outstanding result considering the circumstances. Happy to take any questions though. Thank you very much. Any questions, councillors? If there be no questions, I think I think you deserve very good. If I uh, was sorry, Mr. Mayor, you yeah, a bit. one question sure. in regard to presentation, Brad. Yes. At the end of the year at school you get a report card. Yes. How do you see our report card? Uh, well, it, it's improving. So you can see the green shoots. The, ch the challenge is you're navigating the amalgamation things. And this is, you've you sort of got two activities happening. We're trying to land some amalgamation and harmonisation activities together with the core business. Um, it, 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 
C plus maybe. What was it? C plus. C plus. Okay. So, like you know, our, our heads above water. I think we're trending in the right direction. We've got some very capable resources. There's some challenges though with um, landing the amalgamation projects and people's expectations of when that would have achieved finalisation, together with the delivery of the core business of council. So I, I, I think there's there's a lot to like. There's certainly some elements though that we'd like to see improved. Um, and, and cash, considering the level of rate um, and the ability to generate um, income streams for council, if the funding models don't change on the horizon period, Fred, in, in two or three years' time, it, it could be quite challenging. So we, we need some stuff to go our way in the next couple of years. Thanks for answering. Yep. And I'm thinking the uh, level of cash there it can be a result of uh, a lot of projects and uh, Berger projects that have come in where we've got to deliver where our cash is pressured mm -hmm. before our return on that, um, well, whether it's state or federal funding comes in. Yeah, the, well, there's just conflicting demands on the yeah. cash and where, where it needs to go, and that's one of the challenges that, that the management team have got in between um, special one-off projects that might happen through drought, fire or flood. Mm -hmm. um, then there's the amalgamation activities and then there's the normal capital management plan. And, and at the moment, one of council's challenges, that sort of concept of robbing Peter to pay Paul, we're getting stuff done, but is it all happening at a sufficient momentum to, to um, achieve what each different stakeholder feels is the right momentum? Okay. And there's only so much cash to go around. Excellent. I think through you, Mr Mayor, um, very good presentation and credit to um, Joe and Shane and the team to um, you know, to improve on on our timing and our performance and getting this information through. But I think, yeah, the journey's ahead of us in terms of our asset management, um, reviewing our service levels across the Shire, our rates harmony to get that together. Um, obviously, we've got our special rate in for our pool. Um, work to do on that one, but um, really the go forward is, and Joe and I have talked about setting some, some more... Um, you know, it's good to have our ratios and things, but some more definitive targets for this council and a financial strategy to say we want our unrestricted cash to get up to this or that or have some realistic, simple to understand levels that we expect that we want to have as cash for any shocks or other things we want to yeah. um, navigate through each year. Yeah, Absolutely. And and um, just one question. Uh, when I went to school, I went from one to five, so I'm, I'm guessing we we're on a three plus. Would that be right? Yes. Your C is a three plus in my Sure, let's day. do that. Yep. That's excellent. <laughs> That's excellent. Dream to yes. Yes. Like yes. that, That's right. I'm reading report cards at the moment, so <laughs> they use completely different scale at yes. the moment. Yeah, and no further questions, councillors? If, um, if that, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll get a mover and second up. Yeah, moved by Andrew Kent, uh, Council Kennedy, and seconded by Council Whitechurch. All in favour? Again, Gary. And now we'll move on to item number seven, the General Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, seven point one is an update report on the. Get myself to the heading. Cora Aerodrome agreement to lease with Andrew Imports <coughs> Proprietary Limited. So, uh, the council have been through um, this uh, quite a bit, but I just wanted to call out. Um, obviously, the recommendation at the end is, is for notation, so it's probably best we do um, do that way. It's a lengthy report, so I'd probably get a recommendation here that I've got to note the report on, on the lease negotiations. I've got a. Um, Point two, to proceed to finalise the matter and progress a draft business plan, including the stakeholder engagement and receive a further report um, on, on this as the matter progresses with a view to finalising arrangements for 1 July 2021. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Wales. So I just want to just talk through that if I can, then some questions or comments um, could come from that. But a very long journey, and I won't go through this. There's a lot of pages here, but it does talk back to um, the early days and even in the Kyra Shire days, uh, 2008, they did a, um, a fairly, um, well, I'm not sure the length of it, but there was a review done in 2008 into the Kyra area <coughs> and, and in terms of what the, uh, the council at the time could do to try and uh, activate the site a bit more. And certainly there's been um, some very successful businesses out there with gliding and other things. Um, the Jump Shack and uh, Kyra was known in the years for, for those sort of things. Um, but obviously over time, um, you know, those things um, fade away a little bit and particularly COVID now has really impacted on the international operations of our 
Um, not that he's within the airport, but there's a major business out there that does go well when, when allowed to on, on freehold land. But more back to the Corrishai towards the end of the merger, engage Landrum and Brown to do um, another business plan for, for out there at the site to try and um, look at what the industry and what the markets were telling us then. So that got um, done to a draft stage and then through merger, it understandably didn't get through to a council um, format or a forum. So, and certainly this council, this elected council never um, to our records considered the draft plan. Fast forward to the Qantas um, scenario where uh, airports everywhere were putting their hand up to be considered for Qantas um, back around 2018. Um, so council at the time and there was an onerous amount of reports went through, but we did engage Landrum and Brown again to do our bid for Qantas and that was not successful as we know. Uh, Landrum and Brown then were used to do, off the back of that we ran the EOY which landed us with within this process with Amber Airports. Landrum and Brown are uh, quite experts in the field. They were then used to evaluate um, and recommend uh, Amber to go forward and, and try and progress this lease situation. Um, so that's where some of the report talks to, but more importantly, I think, um, I just wanted to highlight as well, the grant applications, we've been unsuccessful um, since, you know, that around that 2017, 18 time and some major um, capital grants we've, we've gone for, um, for that air to try and rebuild um, the asset. So there's some major issues under the ground with drainage, um, could be around 2 million or more to replace some um, out of out of their life, um, old corrugate un underground drainage. And that of course just further impacts on the, on the runways. Um, and then the infrastructure around the facility, so the terminal building and uh, the jump shack building, et cetera, is all well past its used by date. So we're unsuccessful in a couple of those. We've gone, um, we're about to lodge a grant again, um, probably this week if it's not already in, through state government again for an amount of 300,000. And that is the maximum amount we could apply for without having to have a contribution. So where the staff have done a terrific job of putting in um, some work on that, which will, would go towards tarmac and some lighting, um, those types of projects. So it was 250,000 for reseal and then 50 on drainage line marking. So that's um, where we're up to in terms of grant applications. We're getting a partner letter, a letter of support from Amber um, to support that application. We, we hopefully um, would get some good luck in that, but who knows um, where, the, where the money goes in terms of that application. And then back to, um, I just looking through the draft business plan and all the points that were made at that time, it's just a real key document that needs to be, I think, progressed um, in line with and as we continue to negotiate um, through with Amber, whichever, wherever that gets to. So um, part of the lease agreement with Amber, if we do get to a position where both parties are comfortable with knowing enough about the way forward is a master plan. So master plan to really lay out spatially what um, the airport could get to, and that could be both air side, land side, um, potential for property development around it, and, and not all that would, would have to be under the domain of AMBER if they do um, get through the, to this lease process. But the business plans, obviously that higher level talks about um, rate of return investment, you know, the risk um, and some of the different options council would have for partners out there. So I just think it's a bit, um, it's a bit of a pity that we did um, probably let that slip a little bit back when um, it was originally paid for. So I think it's um, it's incumbent on us to finalise that process through this next six months and and as much as anything, to say council knows the business operations out there, but to continue to then be able to engage on that and let the community know, let the stakeholders know um, where we see the future. And we know that they're really challenging um, assets, airports, and um, hard to even sell them for, for minimal money. Um, but we certainly see um, that the community would still value having that airport. It's got a lot of good, despite the infrastructure issues, it's got an enormous amount of um, good uh, characteristics out there with two runways and a lot of clear space around it too and good weather. So I'm um, happy to take any questions or comments, but it is, um, you know, it's been held up. We haven't been able to get um, as many meetings and things with Amber as we'd like to, but we're in a position now, we've got some legal advice about how we, we might be able to work forward on that. So both parties have a bit more clarity on the on the assets that are out there, because essentially that's really the, the main call now is the assets. We don't want to enter into a lease where parties are unknown as to who's responsible for what going forward. So. Just wanted to um, put that out there for councillors and... Thank you, Councillor Longwell. If I may, Mr Mayor. Um, going back to 2008 when the former Corra Council um, had a plan done, um, some of the idea of that was the fact that Yarrawonga had an enormous potential and did uh, utilise that potential for people to fly in and their planes and enjoy the recreation that um, Yarrawonga Mawala offered. 
And so it was looking upon, we looked upon the opportunity to say, well, why can't we do something like that in Coral? So that's the background of that one in simple terms. The opportunity wasn't taken up very fluidly like it was at Yarrawonga, obviously, because of the phenomena of the Lake Mawala. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I'd like to ask uh, Mr Butler in regard to two things. One is the airport user group. Is there such a uh, entity? There is. They haven't. We through this um, Qantas process, we reinstigated electronic newsletter process, and I don't know whether through Landrum and Brown, it was before my direct time, um, whether they did meet with them, but it's certainly inactive, I'll say that, but we have got a database of leasees um, and those sort of things, so I've talked to our comms even to get um, a bit more of that going, and certainly with COVID easing back a bit as far as our spaces, and I think we'd be easy to be able to have a meeting of a certain amount. There's not a great number. So. Yeah, it was proactive back in, I mentioned again, the former Coral Shire days, it was proactive. Yeah. And yeah. certainly with the gliding club, gliding opportunity, and that brought a lot of opportunities to Coral from overseas uh, people. Yeah. Um, but certainly I believe that they should be part of some consultation in regard to where they're at yeah. before we, you know, go forward, too far forward. Yeah. And the other question, if I may ask you, is that... Uh, Mr. Carmichael, our Director of Engineering, did a report about the upgrading, I think, when he spent six or seven hundred thousand dollars a while ago in, in uh, the northwest, north and south runway, um, and it was approved by CASA to be of a standard where we could go forward. Is CASA still holding a cloud over us in regard to um, the opportunity to be safe and all the rest of it? No, uh, as far as I understand, we've still got our licence and we're working through the manual to re- um, set all the, the guidelines, um, but we are protected under what they call the grandfather provisions, so we're operating under our old thing, but notwithstanding that, there's an enormous amount of um, maintenance and, and things that need doing ongoing. I um, might just get Steve to make a comment. If you... <clears throat> the work we did uh, has got the, got the runway to an acceptable standard. There was problems, um, was mainly due with uh, a drainage line that went across the runway. That's now been replaced. So, and then we also uh, redid about 450, 500 metres of the, I'd call it the east west runway, but we're running an argument which weighs north, south, and east west. Um, the, the biggest bugbear you've got at the moment is we, we require about half a million dollars to do a reseal. It hasn't, the drone hasn't been resealed for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. And obviously, with only a very small number of tyres landing on the tarmac, it, tends to oxidise very quickly mm -hmm. as brittle, so it, it needs, and I think we estimated that, we've got a figure of uh, oh. Adrian writes a report, he puts in the exact dollar amount, I think, that I quoted, which is 470,637 dollars or something, so yeah. approximately that amount is needed to reseal the runway, so that's that's sort of our immediate need, uh, but the biggest problem you've got is this drainage problem, because um, it was made with corrugated iron pipes, which are wired together, they were two half pipes, they just sat one on top of the other and twitched them around, so I don't know how they actually joined, um, and they're starting to collapse, simply because of water, because it's so flat there. Um, and that brings up another problem where we need to go right back to where the outfall and drainage is, right down at the river, and work our way back up to make sure that all that area drains. Uh, so probably what we're looking at, if I may, Mr Mayor, make a little comment, a lot of capital, Mm. to make it to a standard where if these people were to have the opportunity, somebody's got to spend big money. That's correct. And Thank the you other problem you've got is the lighting. The lighting is not lighting today. You get LED lighting, which all on everything seems to be LED these days. So um, the stuff we have out there was put in in the 70s, so it's 50 years old. So mm. Thank you for that. Mm. Thank you. And, and the other point is, of course, uh, take it on board that if we did have this partner and they were using it a lot, there'd be a lot more pressure on the on the strip and maybe a pressure to renew it more often. But um, it is our airstrip anyway, so even if we do or don't go ahead um, successfully with this negotiation, we do have to acknowledge at some stage, but I know we've got probably all worse results on our roads, but we do have to acknowledge that there, there is our asset out there that's that's underground that's, um, if we keep pouring money onto the top all the time and without working away at that. But longer term, just wanted to make sure councillors are aware. Council Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just following on from councillor Long's uh, comments, yeah. the, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we need 436,000 to bring it up to CASA standard. 
and the maximum grant that we've applied for is 300 and of that only 250 is going to be. The numbers to me don't add up that it's, we're doing this and it's still not going to be to CASA standard. Um, is there a, a plan B as to how we're going? To, to me, it seems um, unrealistic to um, spend the money that's not going to do the job and still ha uh, require further um, work down the track. Should we not just do it once and do it properly? And uh, appreciate the comment from Mr. Butler. Thanks, Councillor Meagle. We'd certainly like to do it once and do it right, but without the um, ability to put some contribution forward in our current, um, as we talked about with our uh, financial plan, we, can, um, we want to just arrest all these sort of um, areas where we're jumping at different areas. So we, we just went forward with the 300,000, which was the maximum. Uh, it certainly wouldn't go to waste. It won't be an area where we'd, we'd have to do a job. We'd just do a certain section, I would have thought. And, but that is the maximum grant without having to contribute. So without having a fully developed um, you know, project out there to say where's where's our contribution coming from, um, we just felt, and when with the timing, of course, they throw these grants at you and um, we wanted to be in it. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the reason we were just going for the minimum. I, I acknowledge the... Um, the um, What's the word? The constraint on our, on on finances. Yeah. Um, fully acknowledge that. But is the two hundred and fifty going to, um, but do or be sufficient for or get enough runway organised, or is it only going to get half the runway done? We'll have to wait for another grant to come forward before we can get the rest of it done. That's probably the question. Yeah, we'll take that unnoticed unless Steve knows off the top of his head. But. Um, could you what I'd prefer to see us do uh, is do half the time, yeah. um, simply because of the fact in eight or ten years' time when one's doing again, you then don't have to do it all at once again mm -hmm. and find the big sum. So even if you did it over four years, it wouldn't worry me at least. And same with the roads, we, we try not to do it all in one great thumb. It would be nice if we had five million dollars and reseal everything, but then the next time it needs doing, you've got to find that money again. Mm -hmm. So if you do a bit every year, mm -hmm. then the aerodrome's no different if you do yeah, four year program. Do it. If we out of this, if we could get half done, that'd be ideal. You could do one runway, yep. have you now while you do that. Then in two years' time, perhaps do the other runway, and then you you finish the program. Terrific, thank you. And and also hopefully your business is building in that period of time too. So, yeah. yep. Councillor Thomas, um, just in regards to the grant applications that you popped it, you know, that you put in over a period of time, mm. what feedback does the council receive in terms of why the grant application unsuccessful? Is it the scope of the project that you're putting into the application, or is it too many applications for that particular project? Is it because where we're located? It's because just tell you know what feedback do we receive? Yeah, it's it's um, we normally get fairly broad vague feedback, I suppose, and that's a general comment on any grant application, as long as it's conforming. Um, I guess it's no different when you go for a job and you don't get the job, they say, well, you're just, mm. not, just not up to it. So um, they'll, that, some of the ones are building better regions around jobs and so whether they weren't confident enough in our job creation numbers or economic benefit, they do tend to go towards the, the bigger airports that have got passenger transport and extending terminals and baggage carousels. and. Um, so this is a specific aerodrome, at least. Some of the other ones have been just in a broad mix of building better regions that go towards anything. So at least they've targeted this out regional rural airports. Um, so yeah, and we, and we do have that partner, um, as well as plenty of others out there that are operating at a minor level. So yeah, it's hard to, you never really get a, a good handle on what you're going to go like next time when you put back in. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, thank you. If there be no further questions, I'll put it. All in favour? Oh. Against Carol. Point two, Mr Mayor, is uh, just a brief report on the annual conference held virtually on the 23rd of November, attended by councillors um, Wales, filling in for our Deputy Mayor, yourself and Councillor Thomas and myself were able to attend in this room. Uh, Federation did put forward quite a lot of motions that did uh, make the agenda, so they'll be um, what happened on the day, they had a, a series of different panels and then it was a fairly brief time to go through well over 100 uh, motions for the conference to pass. Uh, our, our council got through uh, several important ones on COVID-19 recovery, waste management, uh, funding for critical water and sewer infrastructure, and then plenty of others uh, around issues we have with essential origin energy connections, our land use planning. They've all gone to the board for the board to meet because they just ran out of time. So 
we do hope we've enjoyed not having to travel to a lot of conferences, but I think this one was one example where it doesn't work with an audience that size to get through in, in best part of half a day or whatever we tried to do. So, but certainly it was good that our motions are front and centre and, and the ones that got through got through. So, recommendation to note. Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Thomas. <coughs> Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carried. Our last report for me is 7.3 Murray Darling Association Region 2 AGM. So noting uh, that council note the report that the meeting was held 7th of December and noting, uh, and I would have thought congratulating, sorry, uh, Councillor Brian Thomas being elected as chair of MDA Region 2. Uh, move a second up. Move, move by Council Blacho, seconded by Council Kennedy. Any questions or comments, councillors? Council Tom. <laughs> I can stop. It's all good. Um, I'm just really humbled to be elected to the position. I really think it's part of um, probably my personal development journey as being a councillor too. I really wanted to um, engage in something that next level of governance. I think it's a great experience to be able to do that, especially at a regional level. But the exciting thing is it's cross-border, so uh, that gives us opportunity to look at legislation on both sides of the river, which is another real positive. Uh, just formally, I'd like to congratulate our general manager, Mr Butler, because he was very much involved in the process of getting this to the table, which is our vision for 20 to 2025. And I'm actually going to use that as a platform for our meetings. As you'll notice in our own business papers, we actually link everything back to our own integrated planning framework. Well, I plan to use this document as the same for our own MDA Region 2 meetings. It's, it's something to use. You don't produce these documents and put so much work and effort into them not to use them. So I think that will make us stronger. And thanks very much for being part of this, Mr. Whitehall. All no right. Well done. Any further questions or comments, Councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Oh. Again, Terry. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Thank you. And now we'll ask, call on um, our Director of Corporate and Community Services report. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mayor. Jane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councillors. Uh, this first report at 8.1 is the annual financial performance report as at the 30th of November 2020. The key highlights in the report are that the operating result is tracking where we've expected it to be. Uh, there are a couple of risk areas that have been identified in the report in relation to our aerodrome and our waste services and about the expenditure required to ensure that we meet regulatory requirements. So some further work is being done on those areas so that we better understand uh, what that expenditure actually looks like and what the impact would be on our financial performance. Uh, the other highlights are that uh, council currently has cash holdings of $31 million, so that's total cash holdings, externally restricted, internally restricted and um, unrestricted, and uh, that there's adequate funds there to pay creditors as and when due, uh, and that debtors are at $11 million, which is about consistent with the previous month. So that report is presented to you for noting. Excellent. Moved by Councillor Longley, seconded by Councillor Neagle. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I shall put it. No. Council. Just a, a question. Um, COVID, what has been the cost to our council uh, up to date? And are we being reimbursed by state for some of the services we've brought? Uh, thank you, Councillor Longley. Uh, we're currently doing an analysis to understand exactly what the cost of COVID has been to Federation Council. Uh, so I don't have a figure at this point in time. However, there are additional costs that have been incurred, whether that's with um, hiring vehicles so that we can ensure our staff socially distanced, uh, having hand sanitizer, additional cleaning and those sorts of things in all our council facilities, uh, having uh, rates being paid uh, having extended payment terms with 0% interest uh, available on that. So there's a, there are a range of costs that have been incurred. And sorry, the, um, one of the big ones is the reduction in revenue from our caravan parks when we were unable to have those facilities open. Mm -hmm. So we're currently working our way through that to understand what that, um, what that actually looks like from a total cost perspective. With respect to your question about being reimbursed, is there is no program available to be reimbursed for those additional costs from either state or federal government. Uh, and that's common across 
uh, local government that local government is wearing that cost and, and local communities are wearing that cost of uh, the increased cost of operating with COVID, unfortunately. So. <laughs> and you would assume that the cost would be quite significant to a council the whole COVID period has it work yeah. related to staff and yeah. they catch off their bottom line. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. That comes out of it, the cash reserves that, yeah. Yeah. that council uh, has or, or had a you know prior to COVID commencing. And impacts our operating. Yeah. Yes, it's it's changed the way we operate in, in so many in so many ways. Yeah, so my it, guess would be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. Yes, I would be putting it in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. Uh, councillors, can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Longley, seconded by Councillor Hayden. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, any further comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Oh, no. right. Against code. Uh, Eight point two. We've uh, we. Um, Covered that agenda item earlier when Brad was here. Uh, 8.3 relates to the public interest disclosure policy. So council has this policy to ensure that uh, we have a robust internal reporting system uh, that's in accordance with the Public Interest Disclosures Act and the New South Wales Ombudsman guidelines to enable staff and councillors to report wrongdoing without fear of reprisal. So this policy is reviewed on an annual basis. We have conducted our annual review and we're proposing a couple of changes to the policy or some additions to the policy to better align with the New South Wales Ombudsman's guidelines. So there's the addition of a cash flow, of cash flow, um, a, a flow chart uh, to uh, help explain what the process is. Uh, and there's some other references to the New South Wales Ombudsman guidelines. So uh, it is recommended that council adopt that uh, policy and publicly exhibit that for a period of 28 days uh, before uh, adopting that in a, at a future council meeting. So moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Wales. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I shall put it all in favour. Okay. Against Kerry. Agenda item 8.4 relates to the annual report for the year ending 30th of June 2020. So there's been extensive work to prepare the annual report and to ensure that we meet uh, all the varying regulatory requirements that are required to be included in the annual report, as well as finally finalising the financial statements, which are part of the annual report. So if the document has been prepared and copies will be available uh, to be provided to you later this afternoon. There was just some minor changes uh, or improvements that were being made to that. So I will have hard copies for you this afternoon. Uh, the, the recommendation before you, there were three points to it, um, and I am now recommending we remove the first point, which was relating to Council noting the activity and achievements as outlined within the annual report, given that you haven't seen it yet, uh, and uh, <coughs> proceed with the, uh, the, two, the following two recommendations that the annual report for the 1920 financial year, uh, that the Council note that the annual report for the 1920 financial year will be posted on Council's website and promoted for the entire community, and that the Minister for Local Government be informed of its availability by the 31st of December in accordance with the requirements of the Local Government Act. Thank you, Sir. Help Rochelle for the version of the minutes. Um, we done. Yeah. Moved? Not as noted, though. We've just got to change. Um, it's got that the annual report as noted. So is that you want to just pull it out? Instead of as noted in that second item, it would yep. be changed to will be posted to Federation Council's website. <laughs> Michelle can't hear. Sorry. Yeah. She's not watching the box. Right. Thank yeah. you, Councillor Thomas. We'll be posted. Yeah, so we'll just take that as noted. That'd be good to get back to normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the meantime, can I make a comment? I'll, I'll get you to move it in a sec. As soon as I've got that corrected, have we got it corrected? Yep. Will be posted. We'll be. Yep, that's um, so moved by Councillor uh, Longmire and seconded by Councillor Longley. Question, Councillor Longmire. Oh, yeah, just a comment if I may, Mr Mayor, in regard to when you read the attachments that go with the document, uh, I think if I remember the number of pages through all the affixes that go with it, it's pretty detailed, um, which is, uh, and to read through it to get an understanding of, and I think the worthiness of those um, attachments make it so that you get an understanding what's happened in our journey 
the, of the last 12 months. So it's uh, well detailed in that regard. Um, um, one of the things that if I ask is, it's a minute question, but in one of the things that I'd sense that we consume a lot of, I know on farms and that we do, is the fuel. And so do we have a system whereby we tender for the fuel opportunity or how does that work? Do you able to tell me that one? We do have a, a tender process for the fuel and we actually uh, include the state government processes to be able to access uh, better fuel pricing. That is coming up in 2021 as one of the areas that's due for renewal of that tender, so we will be going back to the market again. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. But other than, yeah, it's detailed and certainly it's a, it, it, it's a heads up when you read the attachments of where we're at and, and the overriders and all the rest of it. So. As a council, you know, if we can understand that mm. mechanism, we can so we can do about it. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Will there be any further comments or questions? If not, I shall put it all in favour right. against Kerry. Agenda item 8.5 relates to the council's Arts and Cultural Advisory Committee and the terms of reference. So the terms of reference was adopted in March 2019 and uh, through that period of time, the committee has been established and they've identified some improvements to that terms of reference that they are now recommending to council. So uh, the recommendation before you is uh, to note that the detailed report there in relation to the terms of reference and endorse the amended terms of reference to include a designated membership position for an Indigenous advisor, to increase membership from six to 14, to a maximum of 14 members, and to introduce a new section of the code of conduct. Excellent. I moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Any questions or comments, councillors? Councillor Thomas. Uh, Director Shannon, I noticed that you, we have the opportunity to actually expand this committee, which is great because I think the timing is absolutely perfect because arts and culture has become so much of a vogue, a topic at the moment. You know, it's expanding. Uh, I'm sure you all noticed what's happening next door, for example. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night, uh, it is a, such a really strong collaborative event between Federation Council our museum here in Kyra and Landcare. They're hosting an Indigenous heritage and storytelling uh, session. And there's, of course, artworks in there. And it's great because it's tactile. Everyone enjoys tactile. And I've noted here that you actually have opportunity <coughs> to actually engage an Indigenous advisor on this particular committee. I'm thinking let's take the opportunity tomorrow night and start that um, start that uh, conversation with hopefully some people because we'll, we'll have a captive audience. So. I don't know whether there's opportunity also to have some copies of the arts and cultural strategy um, in the room tomorrow night as well. It's probably, you know, you've got people there, they might be happy to pick it up, take one home, have a look, all that kind of thing. Just a Good. suggestion. Mm. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. That's a great idea. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. I'll take that feedback on board there. Easy. Uh, any further questions or comments, Councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Aye. Against Kerry. Agenda item 8.6 relates to the establishment of a tourism advisory committee for Corowa. So you may recall at the July 2020 council meeting, council provided in principle support for the establishment of a new tourism advisory committee for the Corowa area. Uh, a draft terms of reference has been developed in conjunction with the interested community members for the establishment of the section 355 committee. And uh, that is now presented to council. For, uh, for adoption. So the primary purposes of that committee are to provide timely advice, uh, information and advice to council uh, on a range of tourism activities, to undertake tourism promotion of Corowa and to reflect local views and issues uh, relating to the local tourism business community. Thank you, moved by Council White Church, seconded by Council Wales. Any questions or comments, councillors? Councillor Watchers. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I could, um, just on that advisory committee, it has been in the in the planning for a while, and uh, some very passionate people from, I guess, Corra and, and to do with businesses have been pushing for something that they can promote just this area. And it's interesting that they've also included Wagania into the into that tourism committee. And you can see, as part of the process of becoming a three five five committee, they're going to be calling for expressions of interest for committee members. So. I guess it gives a chance for people in Morgania, and they've got an active progress association in Morgania, it gives them a chance to 
nominate for that committee, and it also gives people in Corowa a chance that I guess they haven't been able to have a voice or are very easy to make ne negative comments, but here's a chance to come onto a committee that seems to be get very active and they've now got council support. So look, we supported it, we're going to go with it and let's see if we can get this happening because in light of how long wanting to start a little subcommittee for their town, this might be a chance where each little um, little village or town, wherever the size may be, could end up having their own little body that pushes their little package. So I think it's a great thing. Well done. Excellent. Thanks, Councillor Whitechurch. Any further comments? Councillor Longley? Yes, Mr Mayor. We've got <clears throat> some, oh, not issues. I understand where they're coming from and I think it's great for the community. <laughs> We've got a tourism program called North of the Murray, which we're funding. Now, we're going to be funding a local uh, Corowa um, community group for tourism. Potentially, um, once we start that, is that opening the Pandora's box for other communities to come along the same way? So we, we're going to have all these um, independent uh, tourism bodies within our shire over time. And is that going to diminish from our north of the Murray program? That's, and of course, we've got limited funds on tourism. So we start spreading the love like this. Is that um, um, <coughs> going to detract from the, the main game? I want to <coughs> make a quick comment on that. Um, my belief is um, Council's the overarching tourism body. Um, and all these other 355 committees or committees that, around the communities it's just giving them an opportunity to showcase their own areas if they want to put some of their own energy in. And I'd certainly encourage local communities to put a lot of <coughs> personal energy in to sell their own areas um, because, I th number one, you can't leave everything to council. The other point is council are, it's quite a very large council, and I think council are unaware of actually what happens a lot of activities in areas where that's more of a local personal um, focus and I think I understand that um, there's, there's certainly been a, an amount of uh, commitment to kick this off. Um, I'd like to think that that could be available uh, as they kick off but I would understand that that amount would probably come back to a more traditional 355 committee mm -hmm. amount of money um, understanding that we're in a situation that we're just coming out of COVID. Um, everyone's trying to really get out there, advertise, bust and get things happening. So I can just understand that this, this is happening on this, this one off occasion. But um, I, I'd like to uh, see and push every community to, to do the same thing and, and take take hold of the love of their own, um, their own areas and communities as well. And then feedback into that overarching uh, north of the Murray concept. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd, I'd like to think that this committee could actually almost act as a bit of a coordinating committee as well in terms that, um, especially in the Cora era, we have a number of events on over the year and so that we're not just uh, trampling over the top of each other and that um, I'm hoping that we may get somebody from KBE to be involved on it. Um, Rotary runs a lot of events, Council has its own events and somehow provide that coordination so that everybody is aware of what is going on and then um, working out a, a plan to recommend to council that would encourage all those events and perhaps other events that are not on the same time when there, when there is a bit of a lull and those types of things. I think this committee has the opportunity to reach into a lot of different areas in the, in the Cairo um, region and then coordinate them so that every event can be maximised to the benefit of the community. Thank you. Councillor Longwood. If I may support the recommendation and the mover and seconder in regard to if we look upon um, the concern about an organisation that's got little outriders, the most successful story I, I've quoted it many times around our shire is the Low Square organisation. Nothing runs better than that situation and look at what they've got. And so at the end of the day, um, that will be some, that's an example of, of going forward uh, with an overrider riding body. And so, and that should happen around here. I have mentioned it in this precinct about our master plan as well. The models how long, and um, and so if we get the organisations around here to do a similar thing, I'm diversing a little bit here, Mr. Mayor. But the other one is um, we look out at the little village of Baldo. Now the excitement that's out there, and we've witnessed some of that of recent times. 
they've actually got themselves organised and they've put together a progress association of some sort, which is incorporated, and they're up and about. And so all of a sudden they had a meeting the other night in regard to an offering from somewhere, a chica or a way to Bilio in regard to a rodeo. And so they've got to work through the process of the risks and whatever and that. So all little things that get going and all of a sudden people find ownership and that's the key to it. Absolutely. All right. Any further comment? If I may, Mr Mayor, sorry, I'd just like to clarify one point uh, that Councillor Whitechurst made in relation to Wagania and this committee. So the committee is open to membership from individuals or businesses in Wagania. However, the activities of this committee are actually confined to tourism promotion of the Korowa area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, right. Just to ensure that we all understand yeah. uh, what the scope of the activities of this committee yeah. are. Thank you, Jay. Any further questions or comments, councils? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. <coughs> Against, carry. <coughs> Agenda item 8.7 uh, relates to council's procurement policy. So you may recall uh, council adopted a revised procurement policy in November 2019, and in there was included um, additional focus and support for local procurement. So, uh, you know, acknowledging that benefit that local procurement can be, bring, uh, we have introduced some reporting, some internal reporting that, that we look at to ensure there remains a focus on local procurement and uh, engaging local businesses to be able to undertake uh, services for council where that's appropriate to do so. Uh, so uh, we have provided, you know, some uh, high level data in the report for you. The, uh, there are some main, minor changes proposed now that we've reviewed the policy. So uh, what we're recommending to you is to um, note the report on the progress of the procurement policy and to adopt the amended procurement policy as presented in the papers. Thank you. Would someone like to move that? Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Uh, Councillor Longmire, question. Your question in regard to the opportunity, is there any safety mechanism for the reasoning of some sort of abused abuse of the opportunity, meaning that inside uh, some of these numbers are pretty substantial. So even in the old policy and now the reformed one, is there a mechanism that fixes a sort of a, a methodology where there's a safety net, if you understand what I'm trying to explain? Um, yeah, keep on. Um, so I'd like the clarification on the, the question. When you're saying you're talking about a safety net... Yeah, meaning that it, it's a, it's so transparent, it's that clean and watertight and all the rest of it. You know, people can, whatever, get suspicious about different um, processes and that, but I'm just wondering if that was a, an opportunity where this is watertight in regard to what gets achieved. Yeah, the general manager might be the one to answer this. Oh, yeah, and Joe can comment later, sure. Um, just on individual purchases or tenders awarded... Sort of they sit below this framework. Yeah. So certainly very robust um, processes around staff um, panels and recommending um, purchases or, or contracts to whether it's to Mannix if it's below 250 for my delegation or to council. Um, certainly some um, really good robust things around that, but I, I probably haven't done a great job of answering that. But I was just going to also mention this sort of um, this was a merger funded project to try and lift our procurement. Um, analysis, I suppose, if you like. So it's funded um, Tony McCarthy this um, on a temporary basis, but Tony's um, worked with Joe and, and done a, a good job of trying to get this data because it is a lot of work even to get that tracking and those systems that allow. And I know that council, when they came on, really wanted a big focus on local spend and, and then, you know, regional spend. But, yeah, I just wanted to really call out the fact that this was a really um, significant piece of work and if that's, you know, that job doesn't continue because we've got these pressures on our wage budgets, but the owners will be on our staff and ourselves to make sure we continue that focus. But yeah, I'm confident within um, your earlier comment, whether there's um, you know, feedback from communities, more is gonna get that about who gets this job or how does that go. We've had that before and we'll have it on <coughs> time. But, um, we, we just need to make sure our reporting to council is really good um, per project. So our closed session reports, our, put as much as we can to our open session um, on, on the basis of, so that the public can see. And I always encourage anyone that is disgruntled to try and talk to whether it be to Joe, our manager, Tony, or myself um, as well, other than just going to the councillors, because it's quite a, a tricky area. We don't really want the contractors to be talking to the councillors as much. But, yeah, certainly I think we've done a lot of work going forward and, and looking at that spend, I think it's working. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Thank you. Just, um, um, I'll make a comment on, on that. I think where there's a 
by pro <coughs> using local uh, uh, procurement, um, get this right in a minute, um, <coughs> a lot of our suppliers in, in, in our LGA probably can't uh, uh, offer effectively competitive prices, say, against a larger regional centre where they have a bigger, bigger budget. <coughs> so but we're at risk now because we have our wage pressures and everything else of trying to drive to the bottom line. And in that, I see a risk for our local. This purchasing policy where we might decide we're going to buy paper in order to go from another supplier and supply it cheaper at the risk of taking it away from a, 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 a corridor, uh, for example. So I think we need to be <coughs> diligent. I see what Fred's saying, but somewhere along the line, yes, we will pay more, I believe, because it's local. But I think we, we owe that to them to keep them in business and help assist keeping them in business as well. <coughs> and, and I totally agree, agree with those points. Um, <coughs> and one thing, always thought about uh, a local economy, so we just need to be fair to, uh, it's not all about price, no. it's about money to be yeah. in your local community for sure. Uh, any further comments, <coughs> councillors? If not, I shall put it all in favour. <coughs> Against? <coughs> Carrie. The agenda item 8.8 .8 is the long-term financial plan for 2020 to 2030. Uh, council adopted a new long-term financial plan in July 2020 to support council activities as contained in the delivery program. Uh, as you'd be aware, the adopted scenario provided uh, for a 6 to 8% rate increase to be able to fund the additional operating costs of new assets coming on, um, on board, such as the Corowa Swimming Pool. Uh, now that we've undertaken further modelling of the swimming pool, we better understand what those costs look like, and we've also looked at fees and charges, as we did uh, at the last council meeting. Uh, we uh, are confirming that uh, that aligns with an 8% general rate increase, uh, and, and now that we've firmed that up, we're able to provide uh, some further information on the impact on the average rate payer. So uh, what we have done is we've updated the long-term financial plan to provide uh, greater information to ratepayers about what the individual impact is on a ratepayer as a result of the 8% rate increase. So the recommendation before you is to place the amended long-term financial plan on a public exhibition for at least 28 days commencing uh, the 16th of December, uh, to invite submissions from the community in relation to the amended long-term financial plan and to receive a further report at an extraordinary council meeting in early February 2021, <coughs> addressing any submissions and uh, adopting a revised long-term financial plan. Uh, moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Uh, questions or comments? Uh, I'd just like to make one. I've had the question thrown at me a few times. Just clarity, just for clarity. Um, my answer is that the rate peg is 2% of the 8%. So the SRV is actually 6%. Where, where the SRV is not 8%. It's six percent with the rates given to, you, so it's a total of eight percent. That's correct. That, that 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 is correct. The the rate peg is two percent, and so we are applying for an eight percent special rate variation is the two percent plus the six percent. So the documentation with IPART, we are required to include the rate peg in the amount, and so that that does confuse things when we're talking to the community. Uh, and, and when we're liaising with IPART. So the 8% does include the 2%, so it is a 6% increase above what would have applied otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Council, on. Yeah, saying I got my name up there, Mr Mayor, as the one that moved it, I think I should have a say. Um, the understanding has to go out there, and I say this in real determination, that at the end of the day, you've got two options there um, in regard to when we talk about the rateable increase on the whole area against one off against uh, like at the tip. How do I explain that? It's, um, so do you mean putting the increase per property or averaging it out? Well, averaging it out so that if you go for a 6% increase and Mr Mayor, you'd understand this over some of the farmland and that's not, as I mentioned the other day in the workshop, 
the report that says farmers are in this Federation Council are paying above the state average and also above the local average of similar size. So let's be fair on this and get the understanding for these farmers that they know what they're looking at. And we've got to sell it to them, I understand that. In that regard, I think it's important that they know the two different options, that some of them in the old pub test will say are across the board, but they need to understand that when they come back with submissions, they need to understand that there's two opp opportunities here. And I think Alana presented that the other day where I had to leave at the workshop. But that needs to be put out there to the farming community. Right now they're busy as busy and they will be for a while. When, and when the, everything's filled up and everything, they've finished their job, they'll have a spell. But they need, if we've got 28 days, they need to know that in that 28 days, they've got to do something. I might just, yeah, back onto that and Joe may um, take it on notice, but I was just thinking as well whether the opportunity or it might be already in play is you can actually have examples of a property out here, out there without the name obviously, yes. show those two options or whatever other options and say if your rate notice is 5,000 now, um, here's what 8% is going to look like or here's yes. what it would look like on that other method. Good point, I'd endorse that. Have a village, and, you know, a small, very um, low rate amount if you're paying yeah. three or 400 a year or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, Sorry, th thank you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 if that's able to be put on in the um, the adoption, is that possible, Mr. General Manager, or not? I was just going to say what Joe thought of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? Great yeah. idea, General Manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, you know, Councillor Longwell. I think you've made, you've raised a really good point, and that's where uh, it's detailed in this paper and in the long-term financial plan as there's option A and yeah. there's option B. Yeah. Option A is where the increase is applied based on the value of the land. Yeah. So those properties that have a higher land value would pay more of the increase yes. than lower valued properties. Yes. Option B is that it's applied evenly across properties so that a farm would be paying the same fixed amount as a residential yes. property. So That's the one I've been supporting. And we have included that in our community engagement uh, to seeking feedback from the community on the fees and charges schedule, which results in the special rate variation. Yeah. Uh, and we're seeking the community's view yeah. on which way we apply that. Yeah. And we're also seeking to understand whether they're a residential rate payer or a farm <coughs> property as well, because that will influence uh, so. what they uh, what that looks like. In the in um, in the paper here we have the average impact on a residential property through the whole council area and on farmland and business property. In the actual long-term financial plan, it's split further uh, so that we have the average impact on a um, property within each of the different rating categories because we have six rating categories at this point in time. That is, that is an average that we've used. Uh, we are doing some work to actually identify um, what you know an average property may be, like um, you know, whatever number street here in Corowa, you know, that's our average property and what would the impact be on that one uh, without identifying obviously those properties so that you can see some real examples and the community can see some real examples. If I may, Mr. May, just add a little bit, in regard to 2014 when my opportunity was to be uh, at the mayor and we went out to sell the opportunity of a seven percent increase as long as it was explained to the people and especially the farming community um it was accepted very well so you had to explain in depth the detail what's the devil's in the detail so at the end of the day if we are able to make sure these people understand that in that opportunity um i'm sure we can get it get it home and let's not also beat around the bush that down the track this time next year we might be doing something similar and so if we get the model so that there's also an embracement towards the thinking that this is not a one only. They can consume that in a softer light. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Longmore. Is it Councillor Thompson? Mm -hmm. um, Director Shannon, I just have a couple of quick questions. If I thought, get your commentary, that would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, I was trying to work out within our business papers where to bring this up. I think this is the most appropriate time. There was a recommendation moved in about October 2018 for the Rate Review Committee for an expression of interest to go out. Any commentary? That's correct, <laughs> Councillor Thomas. So, and uh, we will be forming a Rates Review Committee as part of the Rates Harmonisation Project. So, this special rate variation uh, application is separate to the Rates Harmonisation process. And I think that that Rates Committee will be something that we need to have as part of the Rates Harmonisation Project and looking at any future 
year rate increases that are required. Uh, with respect to this particular uh, rate, special rate variation that we've proposed here of 8%, Council has already undertaken community engagement in 2016, I think it was, and asked the community what their view was on a rate increase for the swimming pool. Mm. And uh, I think it was the um, the data I saw showed that 55% of the community was happy to have a $157 increase to their annual rates to be able to have an indoor swimming pool. So uh, council has actually already done the community engagement required to be able to proceed with building the pool and proceed with a special rate variation application. Um, this is just a follow-up that we're undertaking now to uh, propose and finalise the uh, annual fees, or the, sorry, the fees and charges for the use of the swimming pool and uh, get feedback on how we actually apply the rate increase. Uh, similar lines to what Councillor Longmire has mentioned, uh, I'm thinking along, we obviously we'll probably get a common, a lot of common theme type of questions when this goes out to the general public. So maybe there would be opportunity with our media to have a question and answer type of um, paragraph, you know, the question, the most common question and a quick paragraph, if question and paragraph. Frequently you know. asked questions. Yeah, that type of thing. Because I'm sure they'll be very frequent and I'm sure they'll be very common. So. Yeah, I think that might be hard to be developed. And I just wanted to ask our media, uh, how are we going with the media release? Is it going to be on time and similar to what we discussed in workshop, I suppose, now that we're on big broadcast, that it would probably be a good idea to um, get that out there and start talking about it, what our media release is going to look like and what the time framing is with that. And I suppose the other concern is face-to-face -face community sessions, there's none of that factored into the calendar, is there? there it's difficult at this time yes. of year and, and, you know, at this stage of the process, given the engagement that was already undertaken yeah. in 2016. And yeah. uh, so uh, we are keeping it, the, there's been a lot of work put into drafting the communication documents. So we're just, we're fine tuning that at the moment, but looking at releasing that this week uh, to the community. And in there, we're also uh, seeking an understanding of whether the community actually wish to get together to, uh, to register for an information oh, session yeah. to see whether there is uh, an appetite a, a for, it. for that. Yeah. Yes. No, that's good. Yeah. So really putting the onus back onto the community, really, to say, we will give you an opportunity for a session to come to you if you, yeah, that's good. That's yes. a great yes. approach. Yeah, and yeah. That's, yeah. That's, really good yeah, approach. That's, that's the mm. approach we're taking. It's yeah. a bit different with COVID and, and with yeah, business. Of that's also the approach we took with developing the long-term financial plan in the first instance when we went out with the long-term financial plan and the annual budget. Mm. We requested the community to register their interest in attending a session yeah. uh, to get further information. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have any registrations. So uh, there might be more interest this time around. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be interesting because sometimes, uh, well, as long as there's a really good opportunity for them to uh, correspond with, with uh, council, sometimes the sessions aren't that successful either. Uh, you, you, sometimes it's better off as an individual one off one to cover all bases. But if there are any further questions, councillors, on that no, one? Okay. If not, I'll put it all in favour. Right, right. Against Kerry. Uh, yes, would someone like to move? to suspend adjourned for morning tea. Adjourned for morning tea, moved by Council Nagel, seconded by Council Longmire. All in favour? Aye. No. Against? Carried. Thank you. One. Thank you. Would someone move to resume, resume Council meeting? Moved by Council <coughs> Kennedy, seconded by Council Longley. All in favour? Aye. No. Against? Carried. Thank you. We'll move to 8.9 uh, of Joe's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this report relates to Council's legal services panel. So we, we have a panel of, of legal advisors that we can refer to John matters to, depending on what their area of specialty is. We've recently been to the market and requested tenders. We've received uh, eight submissions to the proposal. Uh, and now the recommendation before you is to defer this item to the confidential session of the Council meeting to consider. Thank you. Can I move, please? Moved by Council Longley, seconded by Council Kennedy. All in favour? Aye. 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 Against Carrick. <coughs> Thank you very much, Joe. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Thanks Councillors. Okay, we'll move on to no, item number nine, Director of Development and Environmental Services Report. Thank Hello. you, Susan. Would you like me, Chair? Or are you? Oh, no, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, morning, councillors. Uh, item 9.1 is the building approval approved by the delegation. Again, it's been another busy month. Excellent. Can I have a move, please? Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments, councillors? And I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Aye. Against carried. Item 9.2 is the development applications approved under delegation. Uh, happy to take any questions on those. Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments, councillors? I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Aye. Against carried. Item 9.3 is the regional and state significant development applications currently with council. I uh, do have an update in relation to development application 2020-96 for the solar farm. And yesterday the planning panel met and this morning that application has been withdrawn by the applicant. Okay. Has been withdrawn. Withdrawn. That's it really. Mm -hmm. uh, solar farm, five megawatt solar farm in Weymus Road in Mawala. Oh, right. Moved by Councillor Longley, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Questions or comments, councillors? Anything in relation to solar farm? Mm -hmm. Okay, if nothing, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against, carried. Uh, item 9.4 is the draft Coruscant Rights Master Plan. As the councillors be aware, we've been working on this since April this year, and there was a present presentation to council mm -hmm. councillors a few months ago, and this is the finalisation of the draft plan for public exhibition. Moved by Councillor Longmore, second by Councillor Meagle. Any questions or comments, councillors? Just a quick one, Mr Mayor, if I may. I think this is, um, if, to quote Martin Luther King, we have a dream. This is the dream for the side yards. Mm -hmm. it, we'll get a little part of it realised with this nine point two million dollars from the state government, which is excellent start. And uh, we look forward to what it can deliver. And now we have an overall plan for what might happen in the future. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Councillor Legal. Any further questions or comments, Councillor Long? Yeah, if I may, just the way that at the side yard gathering yesterday for the agents and, and our, our people. It was a really um, good understanding of where we are and what we're doing and what's happening. It's been very successful. Let's not take that away from the sale yard operation. But going forward, with as Council Meagle identified with a, another borrowing, if we have to, of $11 million to, to do the master plan, it, it's pretty ambitious because the trend has been in, because of the drought, the numbers have been, the throughput's been really, really high. Um, already, if we look at the statistics at the end of um, uh, June, this year, uh, we've gone from a third highest number selling sheep and lambs in Victoria to fourth, and in New South Wales, we've gone from fourth to fifth. Um, in New South Wales, we sell 9% of the overall numbers. So in real context, some of these variables that are coming forward, um, we've done the plan at the height of the numbers that have been going through. Um, there's some steadying things that are in the future, and I think um, going forward, as, as uh, Council Meagles identified, it's going to be one of those things that, you know, it, it could be too ambitious for us to go into that context. So um, certainly it's not um, the money that's been given to us. We really appreciate it and we can do a really good thing with it, but it might be pretty tough to try and do what the master plan tells us to do. Thank you. If there's nothing further, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Aye. Against Terry. Uh, thank you. 9.5 is... Realignment of the sewer main for 71 to 79 Coral Road, Mulwala. Uh, this is to be referred to a confidential section or closed section of council. Moved by Council Member, seconded by Council Whitechurch. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carried. Uh, 9.6 is the tender for the construction of the change rooms at Victoria Park Recreation Reserve. Again, it's referred to the closed session of council. Moved by Council Whitechurch, seconded by Council Wales. Uh, Aye. Against Carrie. Thank you very much, Thanks. Susan. Thanks, Thanks, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Very good. Okay, we'll move on to item 10, the Director of Engineering Service Report. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Uh, stand up and very good. I'll be here for a while. <coughs> Right, item 10.1, the mayor is our work program. Right, 
for the month of November <coughs> for notation. That's fine. I move by Councillor Kendi, second by Councillor Longley. Questions or comments? Councillor Thomas. Yeah. Uh, Director Carmichael, I'd like to thank the roads crew for actually starting with the grading of the unsealed roads throughout our shire. I'm just wondering what's happening with Darcy's Road. We've had representation, some really strong representation about Darcy's Road. Um, <clears throat> I can't really answer that question because I don't really know what's happening with Darcy's Road to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, I know we have had a look at it. There is about, uh, what is it, 10 k's or something? That, yeah, a bit close to, yeah. That is, is not gravel, it does if, well, that'll be a decision that'll probably come back to where the council wants to upgrade that road. It's not, theoretically, it's not required for anybody's access. There are other ways in and out for people. It's more a convenience road. So, yeah, that, again, that's what'll come out of this roads committee that we're going to look at. There'll be a number of those roads, I think you'll find that. People say they want to be done up. If they're going to be done up, we've got to find the money to do them to start with. Then they've got to be maintained and you've got to look at the whole network. So, yeah. And I think that gets back to our previous business papers too when we talked about the hierarchy of our roads and how we change those. So we are looking forward to the journey on this coming Thursday and Friday with yeah. our roads committee. So the start of them. Yeah. It'll take a while. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing further, I'll put it on paper. All right. All right. All right. All right. 10.2 is a report on the progress of the capital works program. Notation or question already has any. Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Any questions or comments, Councillor Longmire? Yes, if I may, Mr. Chair. In the understanding of the Boulder water supply, Mr. Carmichael, I know it's. I've been up, stood up in the seat before. Do you have any information to give today? The only stuff I can give you, yes, I'm is still there's a problem with the getting this license apparently. So. Can I, if I may, with respect, Mr. Carmichael, I want to bring to your attention if we go through a process here back when Councillor Thomas and I moved the motion for the Minister for Water, Property and Housing last uh, year, uh, resolved in the motion of. Councillor Thomas and myself to host a round table discussion with the New South Wales Government urgently to discuss ongoing and potential water related issues for our townships of Bulldog and Dazo and other related issues. Further to, I asked with a question of notice in October, the opportunity, and that's the answer when I thank Mr Carmichael for it. In one phone call, I've got an opportunity to present to Council an email that establishes the fact that, and it's from Mr. David Finnamore, Water Regulation Officer. By chance, I made a phone call to him, which tells me, as discussed, a drill, to drill a test bore and undertake a pump test will require an approval. However, to drill a bore just to look at the geology does not require an approval, but as long as no water is taken. So I asked the question, can we not at the site, the current site, Mr Carmichael, put down what that gives us a chance to do without a licence? Based on that information, we probably could. That's news to me, I'm not. If I may, Mr Mayor, table this with the General Manager. That's fine, yep. Councillor Long. Thank you. Yes. Certainly with the other bore that we want to investigate further down, we need to test. That's got to run 72 hours or whatever it is you need to run, so we... Is there a lot that have to be a licence under those terms already? But the one that we asked the question of initially is what is yeah. the opportunity where the current site is? Yeah, yeah. No, we might be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Thomas. Just to note, uh, Dr Carmichael, that you have been dealing with the drought funding in this particular section of your report. I just wonder if there's opportunity for in our January meeting if those at final um, report could come through on our business papers because as you would be aware, there would be a, um, you know, a roundup of, or getting close to rounding up on all those um, delivery of about round one and two, just for the purpose of not only uh, us in chamber, but also the general public, because we're dealing with public funds. If we could have a, the final report submitted by then, would that be a that was do you think? a fair comment. I don't reason it's in there when I print off my yeah. program that comes up in my works program. I don't actually administer it, but yeah. certainly we can get it. Yeah. We can uh, get that report for you. That's not a problem. If there's no further questions, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against Kerry. Item 10.3 is the report on the major projects. Uh, the first one is the Aquatic Centre, which is 
still ticking along. Uh, talking with Hines, they expect to be out of there at this stage by the end of January, late January, early February. Um, they will close down as of probably at the end of next week, I would expect, and uh, start up again the first week in January, which is normal. So if we get through all this in time, we'll have time to duck over and have a quick look before we have lunch, or if not. And the second one is the All Abilities Playground. Um, I have reported there that um, at this, when I wrote this report, there was an available funding shortage of 31,000. Um, since that, we've discovered that uh, the Hero Police, which I think I meant at the briefing session, has a stainless steel slide going on it for seven and a half metres and it's fully exposed to the sunshine. So I. <laughs> We've actually ordered a shade sail to go over that to try and give it some protection. Otherwise, little children going in mightn't come out the other end. They might. Uh, it, I can't imagine that it'd be very pleasant. It, and it's a fully enclosed slide as well, obviously, because it's seven and a half metres at the start. Bored enough. So at that stage, and then uh, there's a couple other things that have happened there. That um, yeah, we're probably going to overrun that at this stage by around fifty thousand dollars. So. Just for notation at this stage, and we'll know a bit more in the next. We won't have the uh, the beach area won't be opened next Friday because it's uh, been put off. Uh, I think uh, in your minute, Mr. Mayor Andrew Goldman was uh, contracted to do some of the earthworks there, so obviously that's gone into into window for the time being until we get all that sorted out. So unfortunately, that part of it won't be, but that'll be. Something we'll do sometime early in the new year. Excellent. I uh, move by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor <coughs> Kennedy. Uh, question, Councillor Longmire. Yeah, if I may, in, in the variables that we're looking at, <coughs> Nakora Pool, shortfall of 86,530 odd dollars. My wallet's been identified at the Royal Bilbertys Pool, 31,000. <coughs> can I ask the question where we get the money to make up the deficit? <coughs> The Where do we get the money? For like you, you're probably looking at eight and five, about 130, 40 thousand for those two projects. No, the pool's in the black for 526,000. 526,000. They're talking the one over the roadie. Yeah, just yeah. over here, bottom of that. Yeah. I've read that wrong then. Um, yeah, I mean, but the yeah, the fifty thousand. I'll just have to do a reshuffle somewhere. I won't mention it. Probably has to come out of roads, but it's got to come from somewhere. Come out of roads. <laughs> well, it's got to come from somewhere in the budget. Five hundred twenty-eight thousand. That's no. The five hundred twenty-eight is that's the pool. Mm. It's fine. Don't have a problem there. The other, the one you presume you're talking about more is the all abilities. We're going to find. We're going to have to find fifty thousand. And we keep going to the roads funding. Well, unfortunately, that's the only place we have funding at the moment. Of all with the where with the pool we'll come out of, out of the funding. Well, it may be that we can. If, what will happen? I understand, um, and Joe would have to confirm this. But we have the one and a half million dollar loan hooked up for the pool, so we'll probably fully take that loan out. That will then free up. Depending on where the pool ends up, there's still a little bit of fit out work and that to be done. But even if you say you had 450,000 or 400 left there at the end of the day, that's 400,000 we can then use to top up some of these other little bits and pieces, maybe. Subject to finance. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's quite interesting where we go about that initiative when we look at some of the funding that's been adopted to us, do the, the car park over here out of the local roads and, and community funding thing. My grievance is we keep going for the road funding and it really isn't fair. It's not fair. And when we go out to sell the extra increase to the rural people in regard to the increase, well, if they know that we've been pinching money out of the, and I say it no crudely, out of the road funding to top up and fix other problems or projects, it's going to be harder for us to sell. Yeah, you have to be very careful with that program when you've been I think it's very badly worded. It says local roads and community infrastructure. And you have the, the guidelines for round two came out this morning, and I had a read of them this morning. There's a very, very strong emphasis on there that the money should be going more to local, to infrastructure, community infrastructure more than roads. Yeah. 
why they call it the local roads and community infrastructure fund, I would never clue, but that's what they've called it. Um, and the new guidelines and the new application form, that you, it's probably well that we've mucked around with this for, which is the next item, we haven't got to that yet, but um, it's probably good because the new form that you've got to fill in is completely different to the last one. So luckily I didn't get all the other ones filled out because we would have to go back and redo them all. If, if I may, Mr Mayor, on the subject topic, really when we adorn the, the capacity and the volume of what the harvest is we're looking at and saying how wonderful it is and it is and the rest of it but the, for those that have understand and drove around now to look all that grain and we're not sure in our federation council area how much it will be but it's going to be a record the, it's all got to be most of it will be shifted by road so we need to touch base with our state politician uh, our member to let him know that these concerns are out here. We're, we're taking money out of the roads to do other things, but we've got this enormous harvest that will have to be shifted basically by road. And if you look at the centres that have, have got the volumes of grain, it's going to happen. And so I think it should be on the front foot, just diversing a fraction, because I keep I keep patronising the roads. Well, it's true. And I, um, yeah, I certainly um, endorse you. We, we need to look for more state or federal funding for those road programs. And I think um, Director Carmichael has made a really good point. It's around the messaging in, in that fund, their funding, so that there's not an illusion that it's specifically for one thing or another. And, and I thought you made a very good point there. Well, and just on the roads um, funding programs, like Steve's team is just about to submit or has uh, <coughs> the next round of fixing local roads, which is what we've got the previous million or two for. It's um, about to be lodged as well. So there's some, and again, they've changed guidelines, but the staff have identified three, four, six key key local roads at the target, and they obviously their roads that will move grain and uh, and whatever. And just on the the pool car park and and the road right through to well, not sound pedantic, but the road it's doing a road through to the lagoon and areas, and farmers come into town, so they'll use community infrastructure. Just on the mess, I know they pay a lot of rates, but on the messaging back. Um, they don't just stop out there on their farms no. all year. They, they need and use these towns and and, yeah. and whatever, so, yeah. I think so. Just a little side comment. The beauty about a lot of that grain at the moment, it's going to Oaklands or Boree Creek. At least that it can go by rail, going out again. Can I just make a comment? I visited Oaklands and, and Councillor Thomas drives over the Benalla Oaklands rail line every day. It's covered in rust. Years ago, they'd be moving grain by now. There's by right. rail systems. The train, the train's been going. Has it been going? Yeah, okay. it's been going two been two trains out there already. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good to hear. Okay. okay. Good, good start. Take a bit of pressure off. Okay. If there's nothing further there, I'll put it. I did get a move yeah, in. Play all on the street. Yeah, we did. I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carried. I'll just hear wrong go. 10.4 is the local road community infrastructure program. And the recommendation is that we defer that until after the closed session because we will probably need to, I did not say, but we probably might need to switch a bit more money out of one of these roads programs. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> we'll choose our words carefully, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, So on. would you like to defer that till after the closed after, Yeah, okay, that'd be good. Um, so we've got a mover to defer, Councillor Longley, and the second would be Councillor Whitechurch. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against and carried. And thank you very much, Steve, for Thanks, Steve. the informative report. That's all right. And I shall be back. Councillor Whitechurch, <laughs> would you like to take the chair? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In your absence, we'll move on to point 11. Notice the motion, question with notice, which we don't have any. Uh, reports from committees. So we have any verbal reports? We have none tabled. Councillor Thomas? I, I don't know, Mr. Delegates? Yep. Delegates? Yep, we've got a delegates. Yep. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was able to, once again, we were able to do a New South Wales Public Libraries Association virtual meeting for their AGM. And it was really great because our new appointed uh, 
officer here at Federation, Nikki, was able to jump on as well. I was a voting delegate and it was quite exciting because we're part of the Riverina Regional Library Service and we actually had, which is Southwest Slopes, we actually had two motions on the books and they both got up and I second those to get up. So that was really good. That was exciting. So that was that one. Uh, two weeks ago, Norm and I, Council and myself, did our hamper run and thanks to Council, we were able to grab a ute and do that. Uh, we delivered 50 hampers throughout Federation Council area, uh, 15 to Urana, 4 to Oakland, 6 to Mawala, uh, 11 to our own council community, 8 to Rand and 6 to the Aramath Foundation. This is actually really serious. There's actually a need out there for these hampers. We have put the spotlight onto our rural communities, but I think it's our small towns and villages that are really needing this at the minute, okay? So I've actually suggested to the Moro Food Bank if we could do another run in about April next year and they're only too happy to help us out. Mm -hmm. But I really think that maybe there's some social justice issues going on in a couple of our small villages that council will need to address and look at at some stage. Just flagging it, really. But it is out there. Okay. So that's that one. Really looking forward to this uh, Thursday and Friday with the um, road and drain drainage improvement workshop. Unfortunately, I can't make it until the Friday, but I know... My fellow council along my will be there for both Jays and maybe our mayor. So that would be really exciting. And the other point of call, got to go to the guides for afternoon tea just over here. Celebrating 93 years in Kairawa. <coughs> How exciting. Their original hut was actually in our car park about here somewhere. So that was really good. Two points of call. You walk into the room, they have respect. They have respect for their visitors, they have respect for their leaders, and they have respect for each other. Put their hand up, within seconds they stop their chit-chat. Girls chit-chat. Of course they do, because I like to talk. Everyone likes to talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm good. so it's all good. Uh, two things. They actually pick a charity every year. This year their charity was prosthetics, collecting caps for prosthetics. How many do you think they collected in 12 months? Just complete random guess. Come on. Ten. Ten, just ten of these. How Ele many? 11,800. Very close. Ooh. You, you. you can get a biscuit. Yes. 13,000 of these they collected. I was going to say the this, original number. Yeah. 30,000. <laughs> and just the other point of call, they're actually uh, Girl Guides is a foundational member for uh, Saving the Koala Foundation, which is lovely. And we got some biscuits, which Sean has. I'm at council, a white church has already sampled. He says they're divine. Hey, hey, so hey, please hey. take <laughs> one. They just have, they have thanked us, thanked us for uh, council support. And as you would be aware, that particular precinct where they sit is actually going to get busy. It's always busy, but it's going to get busier because of all the things that we have going on. Let's have one small request. Maybe we should get them to write to us, but they have <coughs> mentioned to us verbally is they'd like some form of barrier between their grassed area and the road. So maybe Council Depot might have some pool fencing or some form of barrier or something they could donate, put up, just for the safety. And you've got to consider safety when you're dealing with people doing outdoor activities like that. Just putting it out there. And that's it. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Thank you, Council Thomas. And yeah, I can echo that. I attended the, the Girl Guides 93rd year well, was part of the Girl Guides Australia 100 year celebration. Um, and yeah, that um, little area over there where their, their hall is now was sort of out of the way when Ball Park was Ball Park and there wasn't the back entry to the boat ramp, the mm -hmm. lagoon, there wasn't the cricket nets built at the back of Ball Park. So we did witness um, cricket training and there was quite a few cars going past that uh, little grassed area that, that Councillor Thomas talked about. So. I think that they want for nothing, and I think that if we can find some sort of fencing in our internal depot without going to any cost, that would probably be a good thing. Because they do play a lot of activities out there, and before you know it, a ball runs out onto the road, and we'd be talking about it as an accident rather than something that we couldn't have done. So I concur with what you say, Councillor Thomas, and maybe I, if you're happy, I can get back to um, Mary Ann Herbert and suggest that they put something in writing to Council just to reflect what they talked about with us and how we brought up a Council. So. Any further reports, Councillor Thomas? No, thanks. No. Other councillors? Councillor Wales. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Deputy Mayor. <laughs> In support of um, Councillor Thomas' comments about the Hamper Run, I'd like to thank you for the company. We had a, a great um, uh, drive around the, um, the Shire and Jollibee Hampers. Um, it was a pleasure to go to the big... Uh, the food share in, in Cobham and just see the happy little workers there and the big pallet of um, hammers that we load in the back of our council ute and away we went distributing to various places. Um, and it, was, and it's, it gives us satisfaction we know that they're going to be poor. So, um, and I think we'll do another one soon. So thank you very much for that. Very good. Very good. Any further councils? Nothing further. We've got a recommendation there that the reports be noted. Moved by Councillor Meagles, second with Councillor Kennedy. Any further comments? I'll put it. In favour? Aye. 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 Correspondence required councillor action. I'll hand over to you, Mr General Manager, to Thanks. bring those to your attention. Thanks, Acting Chair. 14.1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are all just recommended for notation. Uh, so there being the letters there, uh, Premier of New South Wales, regarding uh, the COVID restrictions back when we had the problems with border crossings, Yarra Mawala RSL sub-branch, MDA response that so we have formally being accepted into Region 2, which is a good thing because we are the chair of that region, so it's good to be endorsed. Uh, Premier again, 14.4, uh, 14.5 MDA delegates and ALGA um, working ahead uh, to plan for their 2021 conference in <coughs> Canberra. So we'll be forwarding more information through to councillors in the event that that um, can go ahead. So moved. Moved by Councillor Meagles, second Councillor Kenny. Any questions or comments? Councillor Thomas. Um, this is just partly for more for your information. I was asked um, to provide some commentary to the local media in regards to the request from the Yarrawonga Mawala RSL sub branch. And I'll, I mean, I'll just purely just read out what the commentary that I gave at the time. Uh, with the planning process well underway for a multidisciplinary medical centre in Cora to be established and built. Council is reviewing critical care services for their townships. It is only natural progression to move forward to explore such options for Mawala residents. The population dynamics of Mawala is expanding and to access essential service in terms of medical is a necessity. Let's start the conversation and encourage our community to have input into the types of health services required taking a holistic approach. That's what I said something. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Any further questions or comments, councillors? Nothing further. The recommendation there that the correspondence be noted. Moved by Councillor Bruce McKendy. Nothing further. Put it all in favour. All right. Against. Carried. Councillor takes us up to our confidential matters, of which we have four of. Somebody would like to move that we move into close council. Move Councillor Longley. Seconded. Councillor Kennedy. All in favour. No. All right. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Resolved on the motions of Councillors Kennedy and Wiles. Number one, the Council accept the tender submissions for the following legal providers for provision of legal services as required for the period ending 30th of June 2023 with a quotation with an option to extend for the further two years at the discretion of Council. A. Kelmore, Proprietary Limited. Kelmore Lawyers and Conveyors, B. Williams, Love and Nicole, Proprietary Limited, Bradley Allen, Love Lawyers, C. Marsden Law Group and D. Planning Development Commercial Lawyers. To the Council authorises the General Manager to sign a contract on its behalf with the successful tenderer and the Council authorises the General Manager to extend this agreement for the further two years at the discretion of council upon expiry of the original agreement from 30th of June, 2023. 9.5 <coughs> was the realignment of sewer main for 71 to 79 Cora Road, Mawala, confidential. It was resolved on the motion of councillors Longley and Kennedy, number one, that the sewer main 71 to 79 Cora Road, Mawala, be realigned in accordance with the plan provided within the report. Two, that an easement be created over the subject lots to protect and limit development within the easement. And three, that the consultation commence <coughs> with all affected party property owners once a program work has been finalised. 9.6, a tender report, RFT 2020, 
150 construction of change room at Victoria Park Recreational Reserve Confidential. Resolved on the motion of councillors Longley and Meagle. The council agree to the 2021 budget as follows. A, increase, a increase, need to go through more. A, increase the, the uh, community contribution uh, revenue by 22,000. B, increase grant funding by 20,000. C, increase capital expenditure for the period, for the project by 42,000. And D, above changes being subject to 110,000 of funding being allocated to this project from local roads and community infrastructure program round two. Number two, the council accept the tender from Kennedy Builders Proprietary Limited for this contract. Number 2020 <coughs> construction of the change rooms at Victoria Park Recreation Reserve for the lump sum amount of $402,060 including GST and three the completion requirements specified by the works be completed by the 31st of March 2021 unless submitted timelines or otherwise agreed by council a variation to the project timeline will be requested in line with the successful tenderers works program for 31st of May 2021 and that four the council authorizes the general manager to sign a contract on its behalf with the successful tender. Reopening of the meeting. Thank you. Now we'll move on to item uh, 10.4. Thank you, Steve. Um, 10.4 is the allocation of funding for the second round of the LRCI program, which we have an allocation of one point two five seven nine hundred and fifty one dollars. And if you want to know how that's worked out, it's a third of your roads to recovery fund, and the rest is based on a price per head of population. I only read that this morning. That's how we know it. That's how they calculated it. Apparently, I was a bit curious to know how they got queer amounts, but that's how it's done. <coughs> so. And in light of what was brought up in confidential, the recommendation would stay the same, except that the upgrade of the amenities building in Victoria Park, Urana would change and have an allocation of 110,000. And the shoulder restoration work in Hawkins Street, how long would have a reduction from 280,000 to 250,000 to give you the same overall program total? Thank you, Steve. Um, we've got a recommendation there. Uh, moved by Councillor Longley. Yeah, we haven't got and a recommendation, actually. Has it hasn't been deferred. No, no, we've got it. Yeah, you've got it right. And we have a, a <coughs> second for that recommendation. <coughs> Councillor Whitechurch. Questions or comments, Councillors? Councillor. If I may ask, oh, yeah. Mr. Carmel, I can regard to the freeing up of funding with the money spent at how long on the side of the river and the highway. How does that happen how, to get the understanding of that it frees up funding? Uh, we have already made provision for that work in our current program. So that if we fund that out of this, it frees up that money back into our ordinary works program. Which it would be, we'll go back into the reseal program, heavy patch and reseal program. That similar amount of money that we've allocated. Yeah, 250 to, yeah, that's right. That money will then go back. So instead of, instead of requiring 280 or 290, we should, uh, RMS could go out to tender for that work because they're doing the central nine metres. <coughs> so what the, what's going to happen is when they tender for that, we'll also use the same tender to do the shoulders. So if it comes in at around that figure, and that's what we've estimated it will be, that will then allow that money to, we can use the money we had allocated for that. In this financial year? Yes. Okay. We can then use that money back out on our own network. Thank you. Okay, any further questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Uh, all right. Against carry. Um, I could all that time just for that. <laughs> councillors, that concludes our council meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you.